On April 17, 2012, Film Courage attended the Roundtable Press interview for the Meg and Lawrence Kasdan film, Darling Companion. This audio contains an interview with Kevin Klein, who plays Joseph in the film. For more information on Darling Companion, please visit sonyclassics.com forward slash Darling Companion. Sorry, this is your sixth film with Lawrence. Yes. Was it any different this time around since it was an independent film? Or no, his, I mean, same, still the same writer, the same director, essentially, his, everything is the same, it's just the pace was different, that's all. It's faster. And you were rushed, yeah. Uh, well, that's the whole, the whole trick to doing an independent film, is to keep great pace and momentum, and you're shooting maybe three times as many scenes in one day as you would on a big, luxurious budget and luxurious schedule, um, and you try not to sacrifice quality for that. Uh, it means that the, it just means that that first take, you're like, oh, I'll learn my lines as we do 40 or 50 takes. It'll come. No, you got to show up and be ready to go. Mm -hmm. And things like that. So things are just compressed, but essentially the same. Mm -hmm. And uh, the production note says that you all work to scale um, to, to work with Lawrence. Is, 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 the, um, up, is, is there any reason that you wouldn't work with Lawrence again? I wouldn't work for him for less than scale. <laughs> <laughs> or, I mean, it's almost, if it comes to the point where we have to pay him to work for him, uh, now I'll draw the line. No, that's not true. <laughs> um, I'll have to, I've done a couple of movies for scale. Um, and it's just the only way to get a lot of these independent movies made. You, the actors negotiate deals where if they work, they, they, they're given just enough money to to live on during the filming, but then they participate in the in the back end. If the movie suddenly makes a gazillion dollars, they'll participate in that profit. Right. Sure. Because we haven't interviewed Lawrence yet, and I'm uh, just assuming that Hollywood Studios won't buy a roller picture that doesn't have superheroes or gimmicks, and that he must have tried a studio first. Uh, I don't even think he tried with this one. Uh, I don't know the whole, the whole history, but... Um, I mean, look, he took the big chill to six different studios before he found one that said yes. I mean, it's hard enough. It was hard enough back then. Because mm -hmm. um, there are no car chases and no explosions. And he writes about real people in real situations and recognizable people. Um, and studios don't first become, become less and less interested in that sort of story. Well, what is it do you think there is about human beings when we can be so intolerant of one another that we can love our dogs so much? Like, what, what's the psychology That's behind that? Uh, well, you know, I've written several books on the subject. I, <laughs> I don't know, but I think that's a, that is a question that you've, no one's asked that before, but that's, I think, at the, the core of the movie. What is that? Is it because they're innocent? Is it because we're, all, we're part of their kingdom? We're all animals. We're a different sort of animal. Maybe they're a they're better than us. They're more loyal. They're more pure. They're more, they're more simple. They're not neurotic. They're very few. There are some neurotic dogs. I, I, I know dogs who are on antidepressants. <laughs> that's in New York, but that's... <laughs> I don't know if they do, but I'm sure there are some on antidepressants here, too. Dogs do have feelings, I gather. But, um, I mean, we know so little. You know, there's always some new study where, oh, right, we found out that monkeys actually remember kindness or, or feel revenge or have certain emotions that we never thought they would. Um, and the same with dogs. The same with any animal. It's, it's a mystery. But I do think, on a very simplistic level, that dogs, we can project onto them because they are so innocent. They don't come with a lot of baggage. You seem to speak from experience. Do you, do you have dogs at home? Yeah, I grew up with dogs, and I have a dog. We have a dog in my family. And I just wondered, living in New York, whether, whether you could have a dog. Either. You can, indeed. Uh, I love big dogs. But it's kind of cruel to have a big dog in New York, unless you really love getting out and running two or three times a day in the park. But uh, we have a sort of small to medium-sized dog, which is more apartment-friendly. Mm -hmm. What is it about Lawrence that has brought you back again and again to work with him? What do you like about him? First of all, I like the way he writes. I like the, I'm interested in the things he's interested in, in terms of what about human nature, what about relationships, what about how people are, how they perceive.
perceive themselves, how they misperceive themselves, how others perceive them, how just the, the, the sort of day-to-day struggles of uh, quote-unquote ordinary people in ordinary situations as opposed to extraordinary heroic or villainous people in extraordinary situations. It's, um, so I'm interested in, in his writing, and I love the way he directs. He's it's a very collaborative. He, lo- he trusts actors, and nothing makes an actor feel freer and more inventive and more creative uh, than being trusted. The director's looking at you like, oh, God, I hope he does this scene right, because I, I really see it a certain way, and it's got to be just, you know, it's like, they want it. They're, and then my kind of director, or like Larry, who's, let's, let's see what you're all going to do with this material. And then if it's terrible, he'll, he'll bring you back in line. So that's why I, I keep going back for more. How much of that goes on the improvisation? Well, there's, well, Larry will say, if you ask him, he'll say every, every time an actor opens his mouth, it's an improvisation, even if he's saying exactly the lines that are written. He considers improvisation as the animation that the bringing to life that the actor adds. It's his sensibility. It's his mentality. It's his taste. It's his technique. And it's who he or she is that will bring his work to life. Otherwise, it's just words on a page. He doesn't... He, I, I, there's very little ad-libbing a word here and there, a phrase thrown in. That's how it's always been with his films. And that kind of scripts are so golden that the Yeah, it's like why if you don't usually improvisation is when there's something missing in the scene. But his uh, so kind of it's it's uh, it's evanescent and, and you can't pin it down necessarily, but things are happening. Um, in the writing and in the playing, if you just do it simply and honestly. It doesn't need a lot of, oh, we got to add some more jokes here, you know. Maybe I should fall off the chair now, or, no, you know, it, it's sort of, you don't have to <coughs> dress it up too much. Um, I'm sure you've seen on the internet how, how repeatedly you refer to as Kevin De- Decline, because you I hear it mostly. I hear it mostly from journalists. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> anything that you regret, there? Any any wrong? No, um, because at the time, I, I mean, some of them have been highly successful, uh, big money makers, and artistically uh, turned out brilliantly, and um, fine, no problem. I just didn't want to do it at the time. Um, you know. Is it because you put family in quality of work first? Yes. Well, there are a number of factors, I suppose, that go into it. (coughs) Pure whim among them. Laziness is is a factor. Um, Having just done something similar to that is a factor, and not wanting to repeat yourself. Or you meet the director, and he just doesn't seem like a person you want to see first thing in the morning for three months of your life, or all day. (laughs) It's a very intense um, experience. So you want to surround yourself uh, with actors and directors and crew members and caterers and dogs and (laughs) whatever drivers that are nice people to be around. Um, It's mostly laziness, though. Is this even more important to have an enjoyable experience on a smaller film like this when you're moving so quickly, or does it... No, I've had highly enjoyable experiences on big studio films. I tend to have fun when I'm working. I, uh, I've been fortunate to work with fun people that it's, for whom it is not drudgery and who are not uh, manipulators and who actually are collaborators. Um, but... Um, no, the, the budget, it just means, I like moving along, it's sort of, there's, there's not a lot of waste, there's not a lot of sitting around, number one, waiting for the lighting, you know, it's, it's perfect, it's just, just, and this, the guy who did this movie, it's, it's, um, great lighting, because I mean, it doesn't take forever, um, but 
um, yeah, you, you can do 50 takes. And it's usually the first one or two that are the one that you're going to end up with the first couple, somewhere a combination of the first two or three takes, or the 49th and 50th. The rest are just agony <laughs> in between. <laughs> because so uh, just doing three or four takes is fine. Well, I, I do know among actors you have a reputation for being a very giving and supportive oh. uh, partner in scenes. So. Well, thanks. <laughs> I, I've only worked. I don't, I don't understand that there's some. I've heard, I've heard stories. Oh, the terrible doesn't give you anything. Or just trouble, mean, and not fun to work with. I've been spared that experience. The best actors, to me, are the ones who are giving you the most. Um, who are generous emotionally, spiritually, professionally, that are present, that are there. That are, um, those are the best actors that, I, that I've worked with. How was it to work with that, uh, Kate? She was the one exception. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. She's mean spirited. She's <laughs> arrogant. Um, She'll never make it. <laughs> no, I have. I have no hopes for her career. <laughs> no, she was. Um, it was unique. She's this very special person. She is unique. She is gifted. Oh, she's a lot of fun. Tremendous fun to work with. We we had a ball. Speaking for myself. If she loathed working with me, I, she never showed it. We, we laughed a lot. But your character, you're kind of contentious. You managed to, mm -hmm. you managed to hide that pleasure very well. Thank you. No, well, the sort of, I think it's, be, we both sort of, there's a, there's a tendency with actors when you're playing, when you know what your relationship is to the character, when you meet from the day one, when you meet them, there's, unconsciously, you're starting to form opinions and make choices about how can I use, I don't like the way this person combs his hair, I can use that because I have to dislike him. You know, you just don't mean to be something that petty and, and superficial. So a lot of our humor together was a, a teasing kind. Um, and yes, teasing and putting, putting putting each other in his or her place. And, um, oh, you know, is that where you're going to say that line? Interesting. No, I know, never that, that's, I've worked with actors that do that, but it's an interesting choice you're making there, playing, playing him as an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> um, which is just banter, which is just actors. So, you know, I love that you've decided to play him gay. It's very <laughs> Especially for King Lear, because I, I never saw that. <laughs> you know, has he seen gay? <laughs> Those are just that sort of just actor fun things that we do. Is playing Cool Francis your next project? It could well be. It depends. It's a huge cast and getting everyone in the same place at the same time, and the certain amount of money in place to make the film. I'm just waiting for a start date. The producer is, is, is actually the same producer as film, and he's very confident that it's all going to come together shortly. So what, what will you do in between from Shakespeare? I'm just going to go about my business doing, yeah, whatever. I'm doing some Shakespeare this summer, briefly. Um, and um, could do another movie or something in between. Depends. We, I could get a call this afternoon saying we're going to start in two weeks on Frank and Francis. Can you talk a little bit about your role in that movie? There's music in it, right? Are you going to be singing? Uh, one of my characters sings. Okay. I'm playing three characters. Uh, but beyond that, just, it sounds, that sounds interesting. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to disappoint you by giving you any more <laughs> <Yeah>. details. <laughs> so, Clyde, um, I'm a big fan of your bit with Mike Myers. Oh, yes, I yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you can talk about, a bit about that for my readers. And also, uh, you know, what about my buddy career, you just mentioned it, like, you know, it could happen, like, maybe this happened and I got a call. You, you're not like Dan Lewis, you know, with all your movies, you know, anytime, anytime I show up or something, you gotta run for the Oscar. <laughs> yeah. So, how, why is that, and uh, how do you put your dicks in? Uh, 
Yeah, well, interestingly, the, the Mike Myers thing, I literally got a call at noon saying, Mike is in makeup to do this character, because we had talked about doing it with like six other actors. Mm. And it was, it was originally the sketch was going to be, it had all sorts of big movie stars, and it's at the Oscars, and they're being pulled off stage and being given lessons by that guy. Oh. Couldn't get everyone there, so, well, I haven't heard, I guess it's not going to happen. And then I get this call saying, Mike is in makeup. Are you doing anything this afternoon? Because he's, he thinks just the two of you could do it, a version of it. And, we could just, and you could just sort of make it up as you go along if you come down here. And I said, yeah, I'm available. I think that would be fun. I'd never worked with Mike Myers. And so I went down and we just kind of wrote it and made it up then. Rules of holding an Oscar, something like that. Yeah. Oh, how to hold an Oscar, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was, it was fun. Yeah, and then thing. You, you the, the way your, your career as an Oscar winner, you're not, you're not coming up with a movie, just kind of like, you know, try get the no, no, Oscar sort of No, no, no. First of all, I mean, the I want, thing I want an Oscar for was something I never dreamed had, had anything to do with Oscar potential. Um, you know, there are jokes about, you read a screen, oh, God, this is, this is Oscar written all over, because I get to die, I get to, <laughs> <laughs> I get to save lives, I get to have a rare wasting disease, and yet I'm born, you know, there are certain trappings that are cliched notions about what are Oscar roles. Uh, I think I'm past that now, and um, there's no, there's no predicting what will get an Oscar, and no predicting what won't. Um, I mean, I think they have their place in the business, but it's not something I think about. I just try to do things that interest me, and that might be part of a movie that I might actually go see. Not because I'm in it, but just because the material is interesting. Have you ever lost a family pet, even briefly? Have I what? Ever lost a family pet, even if, even briefly? Yes. Yes, we had a bird that was on my shoulder. I forgot he was on my shoulder, and I went outside and flew up in the tree, and I, I kept calling him, but uh, never came back. Did you suffer afterwards? No, I found one that looked identical. <laughs> <laughs> and no one was the wiser. I thought that was goldfish. Yeah, that's the <laughs> remarkable thing about goldfish, yeah. is how similar they, they look. Very yeah. handy that way. Yeah. Yes. Do you have a favorite Morris Caston movie? And is it one that you're in, or...? Oh, that's a tricky question. Ah... Uh, you know, it's... Uh, uh, they're all different. Mm -hmm. They're all fun. Anyone uh, I Love You to Death was mm -hmm. pretty crazy fun. Mm -hmm. um, just, you know, working with Tracy Altman, everyone in it was just, was just great. And the material was just, and playing that guy, it was, mm -hmm. it was fun. Uh, as if I had to pick one, I'd like to love that. But it's not... By a, a length. Mm -hmm. It's by a nose. They've all been good. That's yeah. why so I keep coming back. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank, you. Thank 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 you. Thank